Okay, hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be looking at what is the best opening to play as black um, if you're kind of an average player. So if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please go ahead and hit my subscribe button, click on your notification icon. So I took a look at the Lee Chess database just to see like what is the most popular move that the average player has to face. And of course, it's pretty much it's E4, which is to be expected. And of course, the most average reply from most average players is E5. So then when I started doing to kind of examine like what is the best opening to play as an average player, what I really wanted to know is where was the biggest divergence uh, between the average player and the masters database? Where were the masters playing significantly differently or more importantly, significantly better uh, than the average players? Because this would be, of course, where you could get your biggest advantage. And this would give us a clue as to what openings maybe we should play so that we can defeat the mind of the average uh, tournament chess player. So I started looking at this e4, e5 stuff, and I found a lot of correlation, like knight f3, knight c6, uh, bishop c4 is the most popular in the Lee chess, and the master's database it's of course the Ray Lopez. So we're seeing some divergences already from the masters who are playing white. They're basically just trying to get more with the white pieces. They're trying to either play the Roy Lopez or actually in a couple more moves here after, say, bishop c4 uh, on the Lee chess database, we have bishop c5, c3, knight f6, then still highly correlated. This, this all gets played a lot on the master level as well. Uh, but on the master level, you can see the most popular move here for white is d3. But on the Lee chess database, the most popular move is d4. Again, masters are deviating here with white because they are trying to get more out of the position. Uh, D4 is an extremely forcing tactical line. And that's something I started noticing when I was looking at all these different openings that get played by kind of average players. Uh, you know, people that are 1600s, they tend to, you know, 1600, 1700 uh, average, or in this case, I think uh, the average, the average rating for this is a little bit higher. It's like 1861 is the average rating for D4. Uh, but I noticed this this really definite pattern that uh, average players are always trying to play for forcing tactical continuations. Uh, so the downside of that is if it's out of an opening that's well known, uh, it's it's usually pretty well known to to we have some sort of resolution. It's well known to pitter out into like maybe equality or or whatever. And I think that's kind of the case here is like this is a really well known path and like the the masters database and the Lee chess database coincide basically one to one on this after e takes d4 c takes d4 bishop b4 uh, bishop d2 is worth a shot uh, knight c3 is the path that is taken um, on the Lee chess database and then again we get this one to one correlation with knight takes c4 which has been known to equalize for I want to say over a century. And then we have uh, castles, and then we have bishop c3, and then d5 is, of course, a very complex line. And then the, the big move to remember here is bishop f6, and this is kind of where my theoretical knowledge kind of uh, it mostly ends. I mean, I know that they play this, and I have to retreat my knight, and I do know that I need to prevent d6, so I have to play d6 myself. And then after this, I'm kind of on my own, but as you can see, the position is uh, fairly equal. So what I was surprised by was, again... <clears throat> the correlation here between the Lee Chess database and the Masters database, this is still the path that all the Masters go down. Uh, we actually have a recent game of Van Forest versus Aronian uh, in this line where White actually ended up winning. But actually that was, uh, Aronian was basically winning the whole game. Uh, Black was winning basically this whole game. Uh, he just ended up losing because of a blunder at the end. Uh, but then we have a couple of other examples where, of course, Black did very well. And, um, you know, for the most part, Black does well, but... That's not to say that white doesn't have his chances in this position, but usually people that are avoiding this on the master level are the people playing white, because generally speaking, if you have a relatively equal position with chances, uh, that's sort of a success story for black. But I was thinking to myself, you know, if you're playing chess at the average level, I mean, this isn't 100% ideal. You're 11 moves in and everybody's played theory and everybody's gotten to a, a relatively equal position. You don't have a clear advantage with black the position somewhat unclear. Like what opening do average players play really badly with the white pieces? Because I'm sure that they play something, you know, really badly where we're going to see a, a big divergence between the way masters play the position and the way average players play the position. So I started looking at other openings. So my first guess was, okay, we see that on the master database, you know, c5 is more popular than e5, so let's take a look at c5. So I started looking for correlations between the Lee chess database and the master's database, and again, I got 
pr some pretty solid correlations here. Um, I was I was thinking that maybe like after d6, like a lot of uh, weaker players would play bishop c4, and we would have a lot of weird you know development schemes. And there's a few, but still the vast majority are playing the open Sicilian, and they're not playing it terribly. Like after cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, I was expecting to see big deviations after a6 and g6 from the master's database to the Lee chess database, but if I take a look at a6, I'm actually still seeing really good moves here. Bishop g5, bishop e3, bishop c4, all very top flight moves in the Lee chess database and pretty solid correlation uh, with the master's database. So people aren't playing terribly against the uh, Sicilian. Uh, they're playing open Sicilians and they're not playing them too, uh, too, too badly. So then I started just looking at other openings. I was like, where do people play the worst? Like, I want to know. Where does the average player play the worst with the white pieces? So, like, if you're playing the black pieces, what should you play to get the best position, the best possible position against the average player? And so I just started examining other openings. Like, okay, so let's go all the way back to, you know, E4. What are other ways we can face E4? So I thought about, well, what about the Carol Khan? I used to play the Carol Khan, and I thought I did pretty well with it. Uh, so let's take a look at the Carol Khan. So c6, uh, d4, d5, and then I notice, again, this correlation between the Masters database and the Lee Chess database. A lot of people are playing the Advanced, and then bishop f5, and then I start seeing this really strange deviation. <laughs> a lot of players in the Lee Chess database are playing bishop d3 here and trading off their best bishop. Now, if I go to the Masters database... No one is doing that. And I mean nobody. Nobody is giving up their best piece in this position with white if you are a master. If you got your rating, if your average rating, if you notice here the average ratings are like 2400. If you've got a rating of 2400, you're not giving up your best piece for no reason. But that is exactly what the majority of people that have an average rating of 1800 are doing in this position. They're playing bishop d3. And okay, so the majority are actually, well... A lot of people are playing knight f3, but even the people that play knight f3, look at the next move. Knight f3, e6, now they're giving it up. So 1800s are in a hurry to play bishop d3 in this position and give up their best piece. I don't know why, but boy, I mean, if you can play an opening and somebody's willing to give up their best piece, if they're willing to trade their best bishop for your worst bishop and let you completely equalize in the position, maybe even have a slight edge... Uh, really, after only a handful of moves, uh, maybe we should let them do it. Uh, you know, just take a look at the assessment drop here. If they play bishop d3 right away, the assessment drops to complete equality pretty much instantaneously. So we're going to have something like bishop d3 and then either cd3 or queen d3. Queen d3 is, of course, the most common. And then simply e6, and we have complete equality. And it's not like black's position is terribly difficult to play. We're, we're, we're playing the normal French defense plan here, but with no light squared bishop, which is just an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, black is doing spectacularly well, which is why you won't see a lot of games like this in the Masters database. Nobody wants to do this with white and just have a worse position with, with white after five moves of play. Um, so in my mind, this is absolutely amazing. And so my thought is, for the average player, maybe the Carol Khan um, is the way to go. Maybe for the average player, the Carol Khan is uh, one of the better openings that you could play uh, with the black pieces to uh, take advantage of the fact that a lot of average players are playing against it very poorly with white. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.